Alright, what's up Amaya oh and in this video I am going to show you how you can emulate entire Android devices on your personal computers. For this I will be using Genymotion which is an Android emulator, not just any Android emulator, it can emulate entire Android phones as well as their device models on your PC and Mac as well as in the cloud. There are also some cloud partners available but we are not gonna take a look at that. For this video we will be talking only on PC and Mac sections so for this I will provide the link in the description where you can download this emulator for free it is available for Windows, Windows 10, 11, 64-bit, Linux and Mac OS as well please keep in mind that there is no 32-bit version of this app so if you even if you have a 32-bit operating system this is not going to work you will there are some requirements but these requirements are just for high performance if you do not meet the minimum requirements don't need to worry about it you can simply download it even I don't meet the system requirements as you can see from here this is my system information I have i5 4th generation and the requirements is about 6 generations but still we are able to use this only 64 bit architecture is required and let's get started first of all we need to download the emulator itself I am only demonstrating it on Windows while you can use it on Linux and Mac OS as well let's download the installer save it in the default location or you can save it wherever you want to use it let's wait for the download to complete now the download is complete let's open up the installer and install the application with some custom tweaks if you get any prompt just say yes to that and I am going with the default settings so nothing to change here simply install it as it is Once the Genymotion installation is complete, it will automatically check that if you have VirtualBox installed or not because this only depends on VirtualBox. So, if you do not have it, it will automatically open up the VirtualBox installer and you will be directed into installing VirtualBox. Now, let's wait for VirtualBox to install and I will show you what we need to do. And now we have both VirtualBox as well as Genymotion installed. So let's finish this and now it is going to ask you to restart. This is a very important step. Once it's gonna ask you to restart your PC, simply click on continue. This will, start rest uh, this will restart your system. And once it is restarting, you have to go into BIOS and turn on the virtualization settings. To enter BIOS, you can either press the F2 key, delete key, F12 or F10 key. Depends on your laptop or PC. While my PC, uh, my laptop goes into BIOS by pressing the F2 key. So when the Dell logo shows up, spam the F2 key and this will take you to BIOS. So in your BIOS settings, we need to find a setting which is related to virtualization. In my case, it is the virtualization support. Just open up this section of the settings by double clicking on it or pressing enter or oh, there is a plus icon if you can if you click that this is gonna give you three options the first is the virtualization which is to enable Intel virtualization technology if you are using a AMD CPU this settings might differ in name but this is everything this is all the same okay once you have turned on the virtualization technology hit apply and exit this will reboot your system and you will be booting into by windows now we are ready to use our Jenny motion so search for gen and run it as administrator 
to give it maximum privileges once you have opened it up this animation will show up and now we have Jenny motion installed on your personal computer so the first step is going to ask you for your email and password don't worry if you do not have an account you can create one right from there so even I don't have a Jenny motion account so let's go ahead and create one there is a button in the right bottom create account and here we need to enter our information first is the email address I'm going to put a random email actually I'm not not a random email it's my secondary email and I'm going to blur this just for privacy reasons and we need to usage type I am only going to be using it for gaming so create uh, your own password this is going to be different from your emails password so don't forget it select your country mine is Pakistan and accept the terms and condition and the privacy policy but you don't have to accept the news and updates okay now this will email an activation code to your email address as you can see right from here and now we need to open up our email and let's check for the mail that we got so this is the email that I have received from Jenny Motion. it also does have an activation link so simply follow this link and it will automatically activate your account okay now as you can see your account is activated now we can close these tabs and go back to our journey motion emulator let me close all these tabs and here we are now we can enter your our email address in the username section and we need to enter the password that we just created for journey motion here we go let's click on the next button in the right corner now it's gonna ask you if you have a license if you do not have one and simply want to use it for personal usage so click on personal use and next it, this is completely free not gonna ask you anything accept your terms and conditions and now we have our journey motion emulator setup now before using our android devices we are going to add one let's check some settings before proceeding there is account information network some hypervision options adb tools device settings if you want to keep it up to date which is highly recommended you can update from here you can also create some backups or check your storage if you're running low on storage you can even free some storage and I do not want Genemotion to collect my usage stats so I'm just gonna uncheck that now let's go ahead and create our virtual machine so here we are given some options you can either, either choose HTC Samsung Galaxies, Google Pixels and other phone models you can even create your own custom phone depending on your use case but these are not entire phones these are mostly their what you can say specs wise you can even create your own specs which will be your custom phone you can do whatever you want the possibilities are endless you can change your screen size resolution as well as source but there is only one source so in my case I am going to be selecting a phone which is let's check uh, the latest Google Pixel which is available right in the end section okay that's not the latest one yep this is the Google Pixel 8 Pro I'm going to be selecting that and click on next you can even choose your operating system version you can go as low as Android 5 and as high as Android 15 I am going with Android 14 and if you want root access you must have a license for that but with, you can even use it with, without rooting your phone so processes you can choose many processes as you want 
but depending on your laptop or PC specs its value might differ I rest of the settings I'm gonna keep them as default settings not going to change anything at all you can even change your resolution these are very wide variety of resolutions I'm going with the default one on this one okay let's see what other resolutions do we have yep this one looks nice you can even change the DPI settings well nothing to change here let's click on next and yep we need the navigation bar you can even choose if you want the virtual keyboard or not I am only going to be using my laptop's keyboard so I don't need that you can even change your network to bridge or use the default one now once you click on install it automatically starts downloading the whole Android system and I'm going to speed it up so you don't have to wait for the download to complete if something shows up I will let you know Well, this did took a lot of time and depends on your internet connection. Mine's not that slow, but still pretty slow for my use case. Okay, this is give you this is giving you a notification that your virtual machine is now ready to use. If you click on start, this will start the virtual machine. And while it is starting, I don't know why I'm checking other things. Let's wait for it to open it up. This is going going to take a little bit of time for the first time because this first boot is always the longest. As people say, the first step is the hardest one. Now the virtual machine is booting up. This will boot the Android operating system and let me full screen it and wait for the booting to finish. While it is booting, there are some settings right in the right side of the virtual machine there are some navigations and shortcuts as well you can memorize these shortcuts or just use the navigation panel right from the right side you can either go to full screen change capture screenshots change network settings rotate the display change screen size in the middle okay there are some other settings as well So the virtual machine does not come with Google Apps pre-installed so if you want to use Google Play services or Google Play Store you might have to install G apps separately. Okay these are all the settings that you can change for your right side. You can even use USB right from there. Yeah this will open up like another device is connected to your Windows operating system. You can navigate it using your mouse if you do not have a touch screen. Let's check some settings. Okay, this setting actually looks like Google Pixels. And in the bottom phone, you can see this is the Google Pixel 8 Pro. And some things are hidden. The IP address is there. We have Android version 14, and, but we do not get those Easter eggs unfortunately no matter how many times I click this Android version I never get those Easter eggs but you can always get the developer options if you click on the build number multiple times let's install gapps if you want to use Google Play services this is gonna give you an agreement and once you hit accept this will start downloading the Google Apps and this is going to take a little bit of time so I'm just gonna speed it up okay now it is starting as you can see in the notification panel we have G apps installed but 
once gapps are installed you have to restart your virtual machine and it will open up website of open gapps where you can see agreements or even change some settings if you want other types of gapps well we don't need to try anything at all now this is stopping the virtual machine and starting it again like rebooting your android device once you have installed a newer version after this you will be able to use google play apps google play services google play store and other google services on your android virtual emulator Now as you might have noticed that it takes longer after you have installed G apps and this is a very beautiful looking clock lock screen of Google Pixel nice so it takes longer to boot after you have installed G apps and have your Google Play Store it is because G apps take a lot of resources and if you have a high end laptop or PC this might not be a problem for you so now we have Google Play Store and other Google related services. Now you can install apps and play games like I am going to do. But not right now, I will do it later. You also got Google Contacts. I don't think we are going to use it at much on our virtual machine. But if you want to keep track of your Google account and Google Contacts and other Google services, they are ready to be used on this Jenny motion emulator for Android devices and PCs or what not Okay, now I'm just gonna close this up This virtual machine is kind of slow because I do not have a high-end laptop or PC. I just have a mid-range laptop which gets these some um, Gets the job done, I guess Okay, you also got options for you know uh, Google Play Protect if you are into that stuff okay I don't think there is anything else that I can show you let's go check some settings now nah, nothing else to change after you close this make sure you do not force stop it and let it slowly close down I'm not going to be using it so let's delete the virtual machine and now you have freed up some space so Anyway, that's been it. Thanks for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.